Altruism in Animals 101. In New Zealand, 2008, two pygmy sperm whales were trapped between a sandbar and a beach. With the tide going out, human rescuers were considering killing these doomed animals. But suddenly, a local bottlenose dolphin named Moko appeared in the shallow water and led the whales out to sea through a narrow channel that only he knew about. The migratory whales swam off, likely to never see Moko again. The dolphin risked its own life to save members of a completely different species. Is this a demonstration of true selflessness? Today, we look at six examples of altruism in the animal kingdom and explain why this biologically counterintuitive behavior exists. My name is Chris, and you can learn all about animals with me on Animal Science TV. One of the first things that students learn about evolution is that it is driven by natural selection, or as Darwin would say, survival of the fittest. In a population, genetic variation means that some individuals in a generation will have unique traits. Individual animals with traits that allow them to survive and reproduce better than their peers pass their genes down and drive anatomical and behavioral change over time. Evolution by survival of the fittest explains how beneficial traits live on and how detrimental traits are eliminated. But Moko's selfless act of saving the beached whales does not appear to be a beneficial trait for his survival. Over time, shouldn't truly altruistic behavior have been purged from the dolphin's gene pool? Reckless selflessness, after all, decreases the chance that an individual could survive long enough to reproduce. In biology, altruism is defined as behavior by an individual that increases the fitness of another individual while decreasing the fitness of the actor. Let's look at some examples of altruism in the animal kingdom and learn why these seemingly selfless behaviors are actually beneficial for the selfish gene. In meerkats, some adults will climb to high ground around the family burrow. They stand on their hind legs and watch for predators. If any one is spotted, the meerkat will sound a warning signal. This allows the rest of the family to escape to safety while calling attention to itself. The signaling meerkats are killed more frequently in what could be called self-sacrificial behavior. The reason this altruistic trait remains is because the warning signal gene probably at least partially exists in the surviving, closely related family members. Even if the individual who signals dies itself, the family survives and reproduces. Your parents, siblings, and babies each all share about 50% of your DNA. This is called kin selection. Individually, warning behavior is altruistic, but genetically, the gene selfishly still gets passed down in the family. As a group, the sacrifice is evolutionarily beneficial. Kin selection is also apparent in wolves. In the social structure of a wolf pack, there is usually one alpha male responsible for reproducing. The other adults in the pack will bring food back from the kills to feed his pups. The best way for a non-dominant male to pass its genes down is to share food with family members. Sharing food with lazy wolves who didn't participate in the hunt can be risky if food is scarce. Are meerkats and wolves biologically being selfless? Or are they doing the best they can to pass their genes down through relatives? Male red-winged blackbirds form defensive teams to protect each other's nests. These teams are not based on genetic relatedness, as we saw in kin selection. An unrelated male might audibly warn, threaten, or strike a predator attacking another's nest. If the benefactor sees how this stranger saved his nest, he will be expected to now help protect the altruistic actor's nest, too. The males can now act together to defend each other's reproductive interests and add a third or a fourth or a fifth member to their defensive network. 
If a breeding pair under the group protection does not return the favor, they will lose their protection and be left to fend for themselves. Obviously, attacking potential predators is dangerous and could be fatal. This is called reciprocal altruism. The selfless act of protecting a stranger's nest comes with an expectation that the favor will be repaid in the future. If the favor is not returned, it goes noticed. Reciprocal altruism also happens with vampire bats. Vampire bats can only survive a few days without feeding. If one gets sick or has an unsuccessful hunt, it can quickly become a serious situation. For this reason, vampire bats form a buddy system. Again, not related to kin, but for mere survival. Buddy bats will vomit blood into another's mouth if it becomes famished. This is very dangerous because after giving up just one night's meal, the selfless bat is now just two days away from starvation itself. Reciprocal altruism is yet again not truly selfless because the altruistic actor is expecting future help in return from the benefactor. Honeybee colonies have a caste system. It consists of one queen who produces a few functional male drones and thousands of sterile female workers. These female worker bees can't reproduce and the only thing they can do in their life to help their genes succeed is to help the colony. Worker bees can gather food from flowers and also participate in hive defense. Workers can only sting once, resulting in a brutal death where their guts are ripped out with the stinger and venom gland. This behavior is called obligate altruism. In almost all other animals, having a suicide attack would be removed from the gene pool because it's too detrimental for survival. But these worker bees can't reproduce anyway, so the behavior remains. Obligate altruism also exists in semi-eusocial species like the naked mole rat. These moles are very inbred and have a hard time reproducing. This is due to their lack of mobility, which confines them to a small underground tunnel habitat. Forming a viable reproductive pair is quite rare, and their offspring are usually too inbred to be reproductively successful themselves. The offspring will spend most of their lives supporting the brood of the sexually viable queen. The reason these animals aren't extinct is because sometimes when weather is good and food is plentiful, a blind mole rat can leave its home tunnel. Sometimes it will find a viable partner by outbreeding. Obligate altruism exists because these animals simply have no other option than to support their queen. So with these six examples of altruism in animals, we can see that the animals are not truly being altruistic. Animal behavior is largely shaped to pass down their selfish genes. Meerkats and wolves are trying to pass on their genes through kin selection. Blackbirds and vampire bats are expecting a favor in return, while most honeybees and mole rats are sterile and have no choice but to be slaves to the queen. I wasn't able to find any examples of animals truly acting selflessly. Please leave me a comment if you can think of any examples of true altruism in the animal kingdom. Do you remember Moko, the dolphin who rescued the whales in the intro for this video? Even Moko was found to be acting selfishly to fill a social need. Moko enjoyed swimming with humans in the summer and got lonely in the winter times. A year after rescuing the whales, Moko nearly drowned a human swimming alone in the cold winter waters. He wouldn't let her return to shore because emotionally he needed a playmate. But can we find true altruism in humans? I don't know. Let's say you donate half of your money to a charity publicly. Your community will think of you as a good person and maybe even name a building after you. This is not selfless and falls more under the definition of egotistical. Well, what if you donate to the charity anonymously and don't tell any of your friends? This is done purely out of empathy with the motivation of improving the well-being of others. But even if acting out of empathy, 
Don't you benefit from a warm, fuzzy feeling or benefit by removing a feeling of selfish guilt you may have been carrying? There is a philosophical debate over whether humans are capable of true altruism or not. Personally, I do think that humans carry out truly selfless acts every day, and probably some animals do as well. Next on Animal Science TV, we are going to learn about traditional Chinese medicine. Hundreds of millions of animals are being poached every year for pseudoscience. Check out more of my 101 science education videos in this playlist up here. I also do cool animal fact videos and I'm thinking to go live again sometime soon so I can chat with you guys. Thank you for watching Animal Science TV.